what to make of a market stuck in neutral, which hasn't been able to capitalize on un upbeat inflation news or better than expected earnings. For that, we welcome Cameron Dawson, New Edge Wealth Chief Investment Officer, and Keith Lerner, Truist Wealth Chief Market Strategist, both here uh, at Post 9. Good to see both. Um, so uh, let's start there. I mean, we can frame this, Cameron, as this is perfectly routine. The S&P had a total return of 20 percent through July. We're just digesting the gains. Uh, it's very normal if it's a bull market to have yeah. this happen, maybe even something deeper than what we've seen. And maybe the market's doing better than you'd expect, given the big Nasdaq stocks getting hit by 10 percentage points. On the other hand, we got 30 percent off the October low. Yeah. Valuations got where they got. And we haven't been able to benefit from further evidence that maybe we have an economic soft landing. So take your pick. <laughs> yeah, I think it is the combination of all of those things. And we think it is probably right to start asking the question, did we hit the valuation ceiling? Because we saw things like tech valuations up 50 percent from the October low. So how much further could they run? We've certainly pulled back a little bit. The other aspect is, yes, we've had those earnings beats, but they haven't resulted in earnings expectations getting revised higher for 23, 24, or even really 2025. So earnings coming in better than expected, but we're really not raising estimates, which helps kind of point to this sideways chop that we've been in. Now, the inflation numbers today, it, it's certainly consistent with this idea that inflation has been coming down faster than the economy has been weakening. weakening. But you have folks from either side of it saying, we have no landing in train. Uh, the long-term bond yields have picked up. Uh, it seems as if we might have a reacceleration in the economy. What does the Fed do then? So that's the, that's the fire scenario. But then also it's like, well, look, the leading indicators say things are slowing down. Bond market says so. Lo slower pace of job growth. You don't always see the recession coming. All those things uh, mixed together. What, do you, what should we be afraid of? <laughs> I think we are in that choose your own adventure mode, meaning that you could look at the data and interpret it two very different ways. And you could be a deflationist and say, look at all these drivers of inflation coming lower and that the Fed has certainly done. Or you could be an inflationist and say, certainly there are signs that things are starting to reaccelerate. I think that the more that the market prices in rate cuts from the Fed, as well as this deceleration in inflation, we probably should be concerned about a reacceleration. And the question that we still ask, will this better growth that we can observe actually result in higher inflation? It didn't in prior cycles. Think mm -hmm. of times like 2019, sure. where you had efficiency gains. But we have a very low unemployment rate, and we have had this underlying inflation impulse. So I think that still very much remains to be seen and probably is the thing that should the market should watch out for if we see that reacceleration acceleration. Keith, uh, the risk reward across stocks, bonds, everything else, how does it look at this at this stage? Well, Mike, we are strongly neutral. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you just mentioned a lot of the cross currents that we're seeing, and we're seeing that as well in the data. And it's not a time for us right now to be on offense or defense and be patient. Like you mentioned, we had a big run up. And I think if you think about why do we have such a big run up this year? Well, we had very low expectations coming in the year and we beat on the earnings side. We beat on the economy. We beat on the inflation side. And now that bar has been raised. And we all know we're in the seasonally choppy period. And I think the question near term is what's the catalyst? The market held in there fine with today's inflation report, but it didn't have a big bang like, I, like it did historically. So that just tells me we're a little bit heavy right now. And then you're seeing the technology uh, sector kind of tread water as well. So I think we're going to be just in a chop for a little bit, a little bit unexciting. And I think being patient and waiting for an opportunity to be more aggressive makes sense. I mean, I, I get the idea that the bar has been raised. Once everybody acknowledges that, you know, the economy is in decent shape and inflation is coming down, it takes more than just confirmation of that, mm -hmm. perhaps, to get the market going. On the other hand, the market was acting like a bull market for several months coming into this phase. Usually, as the moment that people get bullish is not when it fails, sure. when the market completely falls apart. So I just wonder how much there is to feed off of uh, through this choppy period later in this year just because, you know, things are as we expected them to be. Yeah, I think it's a good point. First of all, having some bullishness is actually a positive. You need more bullishness to confirm the trend up. So I don't see this as euphoric. You see some of the surveys like, like the AAI bull survey showing, you know, the highest level in a few years. But then you look at fund flows for the year, and they're basically flat for equities, over $100 billion in fixed income. So it's not, um, you know, it's not euphoric by any stretch. But I think what you've seen, even this little type of pullback, you're seeing people get more negative pretty quickly, which I think is, is healthy. We just have to burn things off a little bit. And even today, so far, we've seen the market pull back to that 50-day moving average. So far, hold that. Um, so I think that's something in the near term you want to key off of.